Yes, I'm very yeah. fine. Okay. So it's really our pleasure to have Gregory uh, from University of Oxford, and we're thankful that he accepted our invitation. He's going to talk about long time behavior and local regularity for solutions of Navier Stokes. Please. Okay, so first of all, thank you very much for the kind invitation. I'm very happy to give a talk at this uh, conference. And um, uh, this is the, of course, the, uh, you can see the title of my talk. And I work uh, in this area, I mean, connection between, uh, between uh, long time behavior and local regularity. Uh, probably more than 10 years and without any great success by the, by the way and um, and uh, doing this uh, work more or less uh, for five years then I invited some expert uh, uh, Maria Schoenbeck uh, expert in, in the long time behavior for Navier Stokes equation to do to do this um, this this stuff and but still I'm not completely satisfied uh, with what uh, has been done. Anyway, this uh, the part of this work also joint work with Maria Schonbeck. So let me start with the uh, with the kind of uh, short introduction because uh, my my area mostly is the kind of uh, regularity of uh, of weak solution to the Navier Stokes equation in particular in kind of local setting so the lo local set setting for the for this problem looks like uh, you can consider some space-time domain in, in this in particular case this is space-time uh, parabolic cylinder q which is a product of the unit ball center at the origin and time interval zero minus one zero it's just canonical domain because we already know that the Navier Stokes is invariant with respect to the scaling, so the the the, the domain is uh, the former and um, of the domain is not very important if you do this local regularity stuff. Important thing that uh, that what happens in this in this parabolic ball, uh, we have a uh, two function w and r. W, as you see, uh, as you will know very well, is uh, uh, satisfying uh, classical Navier Stokes equation. Uh, R is a, is a pressure, and this classical uh, Navier Stokes equation described in the flow of incompressible fluid in Q. So, uh, uh, and the, you can study this uh, in this, um, in different uh, type of setting, but we think that uh, quite good is to, to have so-called five times singularity scenario, which is in, in a sense, uh, any general setting can be reduced to, to this one with so, certain scaling and shift and so on. It's not, it's a more or less uh, a general, uh, general situation. So what this uh, first time singularity scenario is that we can see the solution, which, is, uh, which has a finite kinetic energy, and uh, dissipations uh, gradient is uh, square summable and we also have some information about the pressure uh, with this exponent uh, i'm not going to discuss this because it is a it is kind of convenient and it's it's, it's not a big point it's, this this exponent is coming from the linear theory so it's just three half is okay and what what does it mean? We, 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 we mimic the first time singularity means that we can we assume that our solution is bounded in, in this type of domain. And also bounded here, but for a, for any a. So the the possible singularity uh, can can be only on this in in this in this time interval at this time, this time is equal to zero in this uh, space interval, some somewhere here. Right. This is the first time singularity, but this is seems to be a, a quite quite too too general. And we 
put uh, some additional assumption uh, that this type one singularity. For example, the simplest type, it's again a big story. What is the type one? What is the type two for, for an obvious toxic equation? But uh, I, I also am not going to, to discuss this uh, carefully today. But the simplest and the, the most. Uh, so, uh, uh, so, 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 so again, just a question. Uh, I have a small question, if, if you allow me, concerning the notation. So if you go back, so so in general, your notation, you put X then T, right? Always, or? X and T, yes, that's right. You put X, T, like uh, in Q, right? That's how you yeah. will be denoting. Like X, T. Yeah, okay. Okay, so this is the, uh, yeah, this is, yeah. I can change it. Of course I can change it, but I-, I No, 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 it's, it's fine, it's, it's good, it's good. So anyways, this is the most simple uh, equation uh, among of the type, type one singularities, right? Uh, we put this additional assumption and that, uh, that this additional assumption saying that the potential singularity is, is, is the origin exactly the origin of this space-time ball. And the question is, is this uh, really, is this a regular point? So this is, we can call this kind of removable singularity, if you wish, uh, which means uh, that whether a solution is bounded in the neighborhood of this point. So this is the question we ask, and probably this is the, the most, the most simple, uh, simple, Question in this uh, in this setting. Of course, it is a, not a general part. It is very 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 much restricted. But even having this very much restricted assumption, we still uh, don't know the answer. And the answer is yes. If CD is sufficiently small, so this would be uh, this. This follows from the Kafarilikon Nirenberg theorem. And also, I'm not going to discuss this. It's it's it's, it's interesting point, but but it, it's it, it's some kind of very much expectable. Well, then then the next question is how small how we can estimate this constant CD in order to to have regularity and so on. And that's plenty of question then. Can 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 occur, and uh, there are pl again plenty of uh, way to to attack this uh, this uh, this uh, this problem. I just want to uh, to emphasize that is the the question about regularity when you are not supposing that D is small. It is not an absolute regularity. It's just the next question. Uh, next question to the epsilon regularity. Uh, and uh, and the, what is the particular of this talk and what how it is related with, um, with this conference, uh, uh, with this conference, uh, you can study, you can, you, can, you can study this using the duality problem. And this duality problem allow you to reduce the problem of local regularity to a, to a large time behavior of certain linear system. And, uh, and uh, we start with the, with the theorem, which was proved uh, again more than 10 years ago by Vladimir Shirak and myself, uh, saying the following, if Z is origin with a single point, then uh, there exists a W, which is, well, well, what does it mean singular? It means that there is no neighbor, parabolic neighborhood where, where solution is, is bound. So, but if it is a singular point, then we can uh, find uh, a, a non-trivial, what is called mild bound attention solution, U bar, having the following properties. First of all, it is bounded. Uh, pressure is a uh, function uh, bounded in time with values in B more, almost bounded. 
both of them. So, okay, so this is the, we have a solution, U bar, P bar, which is satisfies this first three items. This is bounded and the, with values in B more, pressure with values in B more, bounded in time, uh, and satisfy an obvious stokes equation. But the important thing is that it is non-trivial. This is the first part, the, the, the last part, which is saying that solution is non-trivial under the assumption that these singular point. And uh, there is a kind of, um, uh, well, properties of mild bound detention solution are as follows. First of all, U is U bar is of class uh, C infinity, all the derivative of U bar and the gradient of P bar are bounded. So you, we don't know decay, but this is absolutely classical, uh, classical solution to the Navier Stokes equation, which is a bounded and by the way bounded by, by one. And uh, since we study, uh, uh, since we study type one singularity, which are by definition singularities, which are invariant with respect to the Navier, natural Navier Stokes equation, that, that this is some kind of type one. And uh, we can also see that this is true also for the, this type of uh, uh, restriction remains to be true for the bound detention solution. In particular, that means that you have some type, some type of decay of X in space and time. So if uh, this, is the, this is the point, and it is convenient to work with the, uh, with the time, we, we can just uh, change the direction of, the, uh, of, of time. And then we will, we will have uh, the system of Navier-Stokes equation, which we, we, we really can call backward because there is a time time direction. This is the, you see the, this wrong uh, time in front of the derivative in time. And uh, this is a bound, uh, this says in time, and it is not trivial. And the, and the first, uh, the first uh, which uh, com comes to to your to your head is just maybe one, two, three. Actually, implies that uh, u is simply equal to zero. This is uh, kind of Liouville type theory. That is the, but if it is so, then you get immediately contradiction with the fact that uh, this is non-trivial, and then your assumption about that the origin is the is the um, uh, singular po point is wrong. Okay, now uh, what is this uh, approach uh, uh, to prove the um, uh, to prove the um, uh, this type of uh, Liouville type theorem? You can use a duality argument, and in our case, it looks like consider this linear system. And this is actually a stock system with a drift. So you have a drift uh, where in drift, you, this is you, you have a d uh, drift uh, and you is your, uh, your kind of uh, solution, you uh, having these properties, uh, having so certain decay at infinity divergence free. Uh, right hand side is in your hand, you, you can put this right hand side uh, compactly supported. Uh, and also skew symmetric. Uh, you, but you also can consider another linear system, slightly more symmetric. You can add this term here, or add or subtract. I don't know, maybe it, it, it can be useful, maybe not. This is, I, I don't understand myself, uh, but you can, you can add it. And uh, this is incompressible. And if you have right hand side, then you can take uh, zero initial data. So the simple formal uh, calculation showing that you have this formula here. Uh, and in this formula here, you, you see that 
if, if the guy on the right hand side goes to zero for any f you have, uh, then then this this is going to be a zero. Once it is going to be a zero, since uh, f is arbitrary, that it's q symmetric. That means that this is the artistic of u is zero, and because uh, it is also divergence this harmonic function. It, it, should, it is bound. It must be constant, and because of this, it should be a zero. So you see that the problem of uh, of our regularity can be reduced to the behavior of this of this term when t goes to uh, to to zero. And about u, you know that this is the bounded by L infinity norm of this guy is bounded by CD, say, for example, uh, it is less than square root of T. And you will see that, for example, you need to understand whether the say, one norm goes to, to infinity, but not faster than square root of T and things, things like that. So clearly that, uh, that, uh, that it is a reasonable, a problem to study. Of course, there is a technical and very boring job to justify this formula because you you have to you don't have very good decay of u, not very good decay of the w, but it it can be done. Uh, and the theorem uh, we can prove um, is is as following. Well, clearly that you need to study uh, L1 norm and uh, what you know, this is, uh, this is the not clear, but uh, for, for V, clearly you can, you can have any energy solution and therefore also L2 norm for V would be also good to understand how, how L2 norm goes to, 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 to infinity. Uh, when goes to to what when time goes to infinity, and the theorem which we we can prove is uh, is like this. So v one is growing, uh, but uh, power is square root of d three over half, and this there is also a minor a logarithmic factor uh, and. Uh, but the uh, two norm is is going to zero. Uh, also, with this logarithmic factor. So the the. Uh, so the, so, uh, so, so, so again, I'm, I'm I'm a little bit confused. The theorem here, you are saying, uh, I'm I'm not understanding what is the hypothesis for the theorem. The hypothesis of the theorem is that uh, you have u. Which is uh, bounded. Uh, so, so you are assuming. Uh, okay, now if you go back, the, the yeah. one the slide before. This okay. Is now the, you are assuming that you have a U that satisfies this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the backward uh, navier stokes right. equation. So you are assuming that the U, uh, and you are asking the question whether U is zero. Uh, uh, yes, 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 yes. Okay. Uh, yes. So then, yes. Then you are looking at the dual problem. So now let's go right. Okay, no, no, one second, one second. So, so now you are looking at the V problem, just one slide before. Yeah. yeah. Okay, now you are taking an F. And, uh, can you go back? Yeah. Just to see the V, right. So, so now you are taking this V equation with a yeah. forcing F yeah. and you want yeah. to prove the existence for this dual problem, right? Well, it, it is trivial because it is it, this stock system is drift and drift is is bounded divergence free. It is not a point. I mean, this is the easy stuff. Okay, okay. This, so, but you need you need some yeah, you need some estimate on v. Yeah, uh, we need the theorem. What we have the theorem I'm proving is that take the v that was constructed in that dual problem and you want to prove those as estimate, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to show that this uh, this integral goes to zero and t goes uh, when t goes to uh, t, t goes to infinity. I cannot say anything about u except that this is less than c d divided by square root of t, and therefore it remains to understand how how v uh, 
how V grows or going to, to zero, whatever, decay at infinity properties of the V, because V also is a counterpart of this integral here. And this is probably easier to understand than to understand decay of U. Right? Is okay, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So what this is a theorem about behavior of V of solution of dual problem. So do, dual problem actually linear problem. And in some, in some sense, for example, if you put these terms here, it looks like a linearization of, uh, of uh, Navier stocks around U. So this is the, this is nice spectral problem, how to, well, but <laughs> this is a spectrum of this, uh, of this operator which is, uh, I don't know, under this uh, kind of uh, general assumption on you, how you can uh, say something about spectrum of this operator. But this is the, what we somehow, what we, what we, our question is mostly how, what is the, what is the behavior of this linear system with a given U and, uh, and with a given uh, right-hand side. The divergence of F. We, we cannot, we don't actually, we, we use the, the whole structure of U only for proving this identity. But when we started to, to, to discuss how this solution depends, uh, uh, depends uh, on time and, uh, uh, and what the behavior for a long time, we use only the fact that U is divergence free and bounded. That's it. That is, uh, that is probably explains that this theorem is not completely satisfactory because uh, you look here that the uh, L1 norm is growing like uh, three over four, while uh, this simple estimate showing that it should be a, like a growing like square root of T, right? So we have a gap. That is why I'm saying that this is, a theorem, but it is not very, very, very satisfactory theorem because just we, we still have a gap. I, I think that we have a gap just because uh, uh, this is too general setting to study spectral uh, spectral theory of this uh, of this uh, operator. It's too general. Maybe if you if you take the a particular structure of you, some special structure of you, then you, uh, you, you can, you can, you can get uh, better. But even with this uh, uh, general structure, I still, I still think that the, 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 the right result is just that is the borderline. It is we can show that this is growing like square root of t, but I don't know how to prove it. So anyway. Um, what I wanted to say here uh, that, okay, this is a theorem. It is not satisfactory theorem. I mean, this theorem is not satisfactory. And um, I forgot to say something. All right, so, but you can also look at this problem in slightly different way, uh, having this uh, parameter in Stop at all because otherwise it... so anyway this is the uh, the second uh, the second point is the when you can when you can manage everything by the in initial velocity so this is right hand side zero and you consider this dual problem which is uh, again stocks uh, with drift uh, incompressible with the data. V naught, V naught is compactly supported, divergence free. So then you can prove uh, the following stuff that this 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 actually uh, Hilbert product is simply a scalar product is this simply a, a constant in time, and then you see what happens when t goes to uh, to uh, to infinity. If it goes to uh, to to zero. 
for any we know, then you, you can uh, conclude that easily conclude that u is equal to zero at the initial moment of time, which is a contradiction with the fact that u the modulus of u is equal to to one. So this is a, a, another way of uh, thinking, but the theorem more or less the same. And I would say that this theorem is, if you if you draw log, is uh, is correct in the sense of the scaling. But again, not completely, not, not satisfactory actually. It's just nice, but it, it, it doesn't give you a, uh, any, any positive result. Again, the, uh, what I wanted to say, this is probably because it's too general setting. So you must be specified. Okay. So this, um, so what we need is to, to to investigate LP norm and particular P is for P is equal to one and for P is equal to two. So uh, let let us see what what kind of uh, problem why it is not uh, so easy to do this for the stock system with drip. For example, if you would have uh, just uh, heat equations, then certainly you 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 multiply you your equation uh, by some reasonable test function, and then you will get that the P norm is not growing, so P bigger or equal to, to one. For us, it would be a very good, uh, we, we could immediately get the fact that there is no type one blow up for navier stokes equations. But for the, yeah, that is how it works for the heat equation. You multiply this by this guy, and this gives you a for L1 norm, you, this norm is not, is not uh, growing. So if you go to the to the heat to, to the stocks, then we, we we actually don't know what to do with this uh, for this linear operator with drift. So we move drift to the right hand side, and then also we have the equation for the pressure. And for us, it would be nice if you would show that this uh, this from u times grad v is uh, is in the hardy space, then the from this equation gradient also, also from the hardy space, and you will get estimate for the L1 norm. But unfortunately, this this uh, it, it is also a simple exercise to check uh, to check hardy norm for this uh, convective term, and you will see that it contains L2 norm for U, uh, which is uh, has not enough decay to, 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 to have a finite energy. But this is a, a reflection of the fact that uh, navier stokes is super critical. And uh, for this uh, U, you cannot get uh, uh, energy norm abounded. This is just the main obstacle uh, uh, in, 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 in study regularity to the to the Navier-Stokes equation, the gradient seems to be under the assumption of the uh, that uh, u is less than cd divided by modulus of x square root of t. It's kind of borderline, might be bounded, but it's not bounded for sure. So our method, that's why we don't have a good success, is kind of perturbation method. Uh, perturbation means that we move to the right hand side to this convective term, term to the to the um, to the, um, the to the uh, to the uh, to the right hand side. That well, first of all, you have a very nice energy estimate, so certainly there is no problem with solvability or estimate of smoothness of of the linear problem. The, the problem only of the decay. So then you you do in this way, and your convective term on the right hand side, and this is the uh, tensor v times u, and uh, and then then again if you you see what is the big point of perturbation if you have this simply. Um, Simply uh, heat equation for this. Okay, for for us it is also would be very 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 nice. But if you 
if you do this, if you're trying to get the same type of estimate, moving this guy to the to the right hand side, you will get this formula through the through the uh, heat kernel. But all the result, all the possible result, will be will, will demand smallness of b, which is which is this is why when you coming. Uh, to this type of estimate when uh, when when this uh, main part is moving to the right hand side actually perturbation that's that is the biggest point here okay then uh, then then the solution uh, then solution is the um, this can be split it uh, in two parts. One of them is, uh, for example, with the second method, you can split this. One of them is simply a heat equation, solution to the heat equation. This would be solution to the heat equation. It's not a big deal. But the second one can be uh, can be uh, can be solved uh, uh, with the help of this azine 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 uh, azine uh, a kernel, and uh, unfortunately for a thin kernel, which is a thin kernel is is known more than uh, hundred more than hundred years because of a thin, and this is the formula for the a thin uh, a thin kernel. So um, this is the um, derivative of this. Uh, of this uh, operator of, of this uh, where phi is the solution of this uh, Poisson equation with the gamma on the right hand side. So actually, you can you can find this, uh, and you we can do this in lecture in lectures for students. And then there are more or less uh, more or less optimal estimate for the um, for this Azine operator. So they are not not uh, not extremely nice as a, uh, as a heat kernel, right? And then so I this uh, is the, uh, uh, second. This is the kernel for the heat with the, the extra drift term. Yeah. It, 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 uh, no, no. This will be. So this is the kernel of what then? I, I don't understand. Uh, is the yeah, yes, this is the, uh, this is the, yes, this is, but yes, but it is not necessary to be a drift. You can, you have the stock system with the, with the, with the right hand side, which is divergence of kappa. So this is a stock system without any drift with the, with the right hand side equal to divergence of kappa. Ah. Uh -huh. Okay. Right, and then you can be zero initial data, of course. Then you can write the solution of this system, and uh, well, you may in this particular case, couple of course, not a arbitrary tensor, but tensor v times u. Yes, it's just the matter. This is the azine trick: is just how to get rid of the pressure. You can write this. Uh, Solution, uh, solution with the with the heat uh, with the heat kernel. But if you do some manipulation inside of this, you can completely get rid of the pressure, and then you will get how you can get this as intensive. Right, and this is not uh, you know you can compute it by by hand. So it's not a, it's not a point. Right, but decay is not uh, so good. There is no exponent here, as in the in the case of the heat. So I recall the theorem, which we is uh, which which I'm going to uh, to comment uh, the proof of this theorem. Uh, um, so L one norm is growing, uh, L two norm is going to zero, and um, and uh, by the way, if you it's again another philosophical point that if you go with weakly rehab solution, 
and trying to understand uh, the behavior of M2 norm, then this is probably so. I'm not completely sure, but uh, there is an estimate C uh, divided to some constant divided by square root of T. So decay is square root of T. And this is because of this not nonlinearity, because it is self organized. It's better than, than if you have a linear, linear, uh, linear system. That is uh, an, another, another, um, and another confirmation that uh, linearization may be not so good as as linear uh, system as well as linear system right uh, and the proof is is based on the in two steps the first step we can estimate l1 by l2 you, you know L2 norm of V, which is energy estimate, and you know that it is finite, then you can estimate L1. So, and this is a, probably the weakest point because there is no great mass behind of this. It's just the, uh, just the um, kind of uh, structure of the, of the, of the Azine tensor and, uh, and uh, Helder inequality, or sometimes you can, use this uh, Helder inequality for uh, Lorentz spaces, but it is not a, a great point. Uh, on this way, on the first step, you can, you can get that uh, uh, L2 bus of uh, L2 norm of V implies uh, L1, uh, L1 grows in this way, which is uh, probably the, the weakest point. The second point is the uh, modification of uh, Schoenbeck and Wigner uh, technique, also very old technique, which is actually not very complicated, but based on the Fourier analysis, having this uh, estimate for L1, you can, uh, you can improve L2 estimate, putting log logarithmic pattern here. And then you can iterate and then how you get uh, this uh, law. <laughs> Uh, 2M in denominator is, is just the result of this uh, modification of Schoenbeck, Schoenbeck and Wigner technique. So what is this? Uh, what is uh, what is this uh, first part? First part of the first part, you know, this is the way uh, how you estimate. Um, uh, Usually, when you do regularity, you're trying to estimate uh, uh, norm, uh, higher norms through this weaker norm. But in this case, we need to estimate weaker norms, L1 norms, through the higher norms, L2 norms. And uh, you can do this in, in two steps, because that cannot be a big difference between the exponent of these two norms. On the first, Step when you, you when you have a two norm, you can estimate uh, uh, LP norm with P smaller, but not uh, very very small, like six over five. And then you can repeat this argument for smaller P here already, and then you will get L1 norm. And this is uh, again probably the source of uh, losing uh, losing. Uh, losing power or maybe you know the point I probably I forgot to say that if you if you prove that u is not equal to zero in this in this uh, in, in, under all this assumption which then you can using uh, inverse uh, scaling zooming you can construct a counterexample of uh, of uh, uh, solution having finite energy with with with, uh, with singularity, so this is like uh, either you prove that uh, nothing happens, or you if you can find such a u, then non-trivial u, then you get immediately counterexample to uh, to the uh, to this uh, to, to the problem uh, related to the Navier-Stokes equation. Right. Okay. So this is how it works for the uh, for this uh, for this exponent square root three over half. Again, I'm saying that this is not very good result. 
The second step, this is what uh, uh, step um, related to um, uh, Wigner and Schoenberg technique is, uh, is this, um, when you go, when you uh, trying to estimate um, L2 norm, uh, when you trying to estimate L2 norm, you can of course go to the Fourier transform using Planchard formula. And uh, the guy here gives you this. And then there is a kind of uh, cutting in Fourier space. This is the uh, simple calculation. You take the function G of D, which is in your head, and you can, you can choose this, select this function in the most convenient way. And uh, and then uh, this is like how you can completely ignore this this term. This is, I would say, this is a cutting in Fourier space. And then you have this inequality for the Fourier. Uh, sorry, you need to uh, you need to to uh, you need to find this uh, because anyway. On the right, uh, you need to estimate. This is you can ignore. This is you move to the right hand side, so you will get nice equation for the y. But there is a Fourier coefficient on the on the right hand side, and you need to to uh, to evaluate this Fourier coefficient. And what you are doing, you just take a Fourier transform of your equation, and um, and then how you can find uh, uh, V via, again, via H, and H is our right-hand side. And this is the formula for the Fourier transform uh, of, of V. And this is the place where, when you're trying to evaluate this H, this is the place where L1 norm of V appears because U is bounded or bounded by CD divided by square root. And this is how you can evaluate using this method L2 norm by L1 norm, uh, by L1 norm of V. Yeah, but, uh, but if you do this uh, carefully, you will see at the end that there is a function G of T, which uh, provide your cutting in Fourier space. And this is this function in your hand, hands. And then, um, then uh, uh, this is the choice of this function. This is the uh, uh, sort of the function H and H is the logarithmic factor. I, I, I actually forgot, maybe this, this thing was already known uh, because the, uh, this paper was written five years ago, even probably more than five years ago. But anyway, this is just a simple, simple al al algebraic cal calculation sh showing that if L1 norm is, is, is growing like uh, square root three half, then L2 norm should decay in this way. And then you go back to the first step, repeating the estimate of L1, getting the logarithmic there, and so on. Now, uh, now uh, that's what is uh, related to an estimate of, of CD, how big CD must be. But this is, this is uh, gives you a positive result, but I don't like this result very much because they are, you know, smallness one way or another implies regularity. This is, you know, uh, more interesting would be um, to find uh, uh, the biggest CD for which you have, uh, maybe you have already non-trivial solution and this particular maximum CD has uh, some special properties of how you can then uh, work with this. Uh, and uh, this is a very good problem for for PhD student. But uh, simple estimate for this uh, CD can be, for example, this theorem saying that 
if I know this uh, constant C star, you can compute this constant uh, for the Azim tensor, then uh, CD should be small like this. And then you have this limit equal to zero. And that, that is again saying that the origin is a removable uh, singularity. It's not a singularity at all. And the proof is, uh, is uh, since, uh, since I don't have enough time, and the proof is, 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 is very, very simple. It's, uh, it's uh, based on the properties of the, of the Ozin, uh, estimate of the Ozin operator. More interesting, the, uh, this is the um, problem which uh, uh, some uh, operator, uh, some elliptic operator participate in the estimate of CD. For example, this operator K, K this is the actually a solution of this problem. So I'm F, I have F and I get AF in this way. And this is the definition of the operator F and we need the norm of this operator. And the, uh, the second operator we need, again, this is like a, a solution, solution of the pressure equation. So this is the pressure equation. If you have F, then you can, this is how you can define this operator, uh, operator F. And then if you see D is less than this value related with the norm of two, two operators, again, you have this uh, zero and the, the origin is a, is a regular point. So the, uh, the, the result itself is not very interesting, very much interesting saying, uh, saying nothing, but uh, the proof is nice. The proof I like. And the proof uh, is taken for it's uh, probably the, the idea is belongs to the sore, uh, but it was translated in the language of it was in the language written in the language of a semi group, and then one needs to uh, translate this uh, into into the uh, into the Snavia Stokes uh, language. Uh, so we, we can, again, we can write this uh, 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 equation with the uh, right hand side. You can write this, move your drift to the, and the pressure to the, to the right. And then uh, once you know F, then you can find this uh, vector A from using this operator, uh, operator K. Uh, through the right hand side, this is possible. And the uh, next step uh, is, well, okay, this is L2 norm can be estimated through the L2 norm of V. I just want to drop this, this, um, this argument, they're not very complicated. Uh, but main idea is to move uh, to the, and this is a, probably a main point of this argument is, uh, is just to go to minus one derivative. So if you have A, you can find the B and the B and, and the B is a solution of this uh, heat equation with uh, zero initial data. Actually, B is a varticity of, sorry, B is a varticity of, of B. So this is how we, instead of evaluating V, we are evaluating uh, B, which is the, uh, it's a kind of, I, I, I call this minus one derivative, but maybe it's wrong. And this is a main point for this B, you can write this energy estimate, blah, blah, blah. And in this energy estimate, the gradient of B is, is it's V itself. But then you can, uh, since it is a B and you know many things about A, you can find the estimate for the B, including this estimate and therefore this estimate here. And I, uh, don't think that I should uh, speak more about uh, technical details of this. And then this is how, once you can have an estimate for the B, it's, it's, 
it's 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 not uh, difficult to find uh, estimate for uh, v, and this estimate for the v, for the, this estimate for the b, and this that gives you a decay uh, for the. Uh, well, it's it's not a decay actually; it's a, it's a gross, but this is integral in time. L should be less than one, and this gives you a decay uh, decay for L two, which better than logarithmic factor, and that's how you can uh, finish uh, the proof of the the fact that uh, Z uh, is uh, is the is the uh, remove, removable singularity. Okay, so thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Uh, are there questions in the audience? I have a question. So what's the conclusion about the, the U problem, the first problem? Whether, what is now the conclusion? No, there is no conclusion since we, we cannot uh, prove this. Uh, in order to give a conclusion for the for the original problem, you, or, or 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 like okay, or the, the, what does it say about it? Like you, you should add some condition. I mean, if you go back to the U problem, the, the these uh, uh, ancient solutions. Yeah. Uh, what can you say about them? Like. I mean, does this add anything about those ancient solution, or or we are a little bit still? Uh... Uh, well, yeah, I, I agree. I, I understand your question. So, uh, what what we you see that the the, the question of how you can get this uh, mild bounded tension solution? Uh, this is the result of zooming and um, scaling and the limit when scaling goes to zero. So the only thing you can, of course, you can add a lot of condition and the proof a lot of fluid type theorem, but you need mm -hmm. a condition that they are invariant with respect to the scale. And that uh, if you, we took the, the simplest one, this, this assumption, which is invariant with respect to the scaling type, type one blow up, this is the simplest one, right? Mm -hmm. So our task uh, to prove that it is zero or not zero, because if we can prove that it is not zero, then we have a counterexample in our hand, because we can do inverse scaling and we are done, we have a, we have a counterexample of, of energy solution with singularities. We cannot mm -hmm. do that. Then what we do, we are trying to prove this uh, in a positive way. We are trying to prove uh, uh, a Liouville type theorem using this duality approach. But on this uh, way, we unfortunately cannot uh, get, a, uh, get a good decay, which providing uh, zero on this, under this assumption. I don't know what to do. I'm saying that that is might be a problem is too, is too general. You, you have to consider this particular you, you know, but how, what kind of particular, I don't know. Self-similar, you can because they are bound. This solution are bound, right? Mm. Yes, and it, for me, it seems to be that something on the level of the spectrum of this operator, which is, is uh, should be done more. I mean, but 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 I was trying to involve experts in in spectral theory about this. How what to do with this? Uh, with this, uh, with this operate, stock operator is drift, and uh, there is no any good, uh, good response because I'm not expert. I'm doing <laughs> using this kind of first thing which come, come, come came to, to, to my head. That's it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, Thank you. Are there other questions? Okay, uh, maybe a last question, maybe I have a small question. Do you think, can you think of a singularity that would allow, would allow you to prove that uh, the Liouville theorem, like you don't take a type one, you would take something else where your uh, duality argument would work and you could prove that 
uh, it is a removable singularity. The other way around. Yes, you know, we know, for example, uh, we know, for example, that there is no type one singularity for X symmetric solution. So they have only type two, right? And we prove this uh, again, proving the um, Liouville type theory. Or you can use uh, you can use uh, you know you can use uh, the George Nash technique. So so anyway, you can prove that there is no type one blow up. I was trying to prove the same using duality. I, I had a postdoc for this, and we couldn't do this. Uh, maybe because you know, because the result is already known. I don't know what happens, but we, we didn't prove uh, this. Because this is the general method. You can take, uh, for actually symmetric solution, you can take a, a, a scalar governing uh, equation for say, I don't know, for the, for the, for some, for some quantity which is, uh, which is known, scalar. And trying also to do this technique for the, for this uh, particular scalar equation where the answer is no, but I, we didn't succeed. And again, I'm, 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 I don't want to say this method doesn't work. This is probably the, the point is that, that I understand very well how this, the George and S technique works, but I'm not an expert in this spectral theory. It's just, <laughs> Just yeah, you simply don't, don't know this very well. Thank you. Are there other questions? Anyone want to ask a question? Okay. If not, thank you again, Gregory, for accepting our invitation. I hope to see you soon, maybe. In thank you person. very much. Thank you very much for the kind invitation. Thank you.